Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, March 16th, and today we'll cover the trades for Yield Max Funds, TSLY, CONY, and MSTY. <clears throat> we'll see what they did on the Friday. Again, Friday's the busiest day for all of these funds because, you know, they sell weekly covered calls and most of them expire, you know, by that Friday unless they had, you know, moved them into next week. So first, for the Coney lovers, we will cover Coney first. So as you can see on the screen, um, they did a BC by the close. So they closed the call that was expiring yesterday, March 15th. A lot of contracts, 15320 And judging by the execution price all the way on the right, they paid a penny. So you can tell, obviously, they won that trade. <clears throat> and then they started a new trade, a 25750 strike. Same amount of contracts, and they got 450 for their troubles. And that expires uh, next Friday. But let's take a look at the spreadsheet. <clears throat> so they have one synthetic position. That's the 250. Right now, they're below the strike of the synthetic, but this synthetic expires uh, April 19th, so nothing to worry about at the moment. If they did have to close it, though, it would cost them $10.1 million. <clears throat> Uh, this synthetic also has costed them $7.4 million to date. Again, uh, sometimes when you start the synthetic position, the buy call can cost more than the sell put. So that's why um, you know this costs them money. But in the end, they hope that the underlying <clears throat> lands above that price. And then obviously they can make money on it. Let's go to the March tab, which has all the fun details. So yesterday... Coin went up 3.72% and Coney went up 2.4%. Okay. So it was kind of a, I guess we'll say it's an interesting week. You know, a little down, a little up, a little down, a bit, a lot of down, a little, a little up. So, you know, crypto is like finally settling a little. Um, but yeah, so let's look at the contracts they closed. Again, they paid a penny. And since they made 436 when they opened it, <clears throat> this that trade was a profit of 6.6 .6 million so good job coney fund manager the new position however uh as we said it was 257.50 it's only 6.25 percent out of the money uh which is not the norm for for the uh you know the coin strike price is chosen so and it's one strike, all their contracts in one strike, and it's single digit out of the money. So they must be thinking, you know, that crypto is going to be on the little downward next week, but we'll see. Um, but, you know, 6%, that's a cushion. That's a cushion I'm not comfortable with the crypto uh, related stock. But anyway, cash and treasuries, we are now cash positive. It looks like they took it from the money market. Overall, though, cash and treasuries did go up 6.9 million. But as you can see, the new position netted them about 6.9 million. So uh, total income for the weekly calls, though, still at a loss. So they're not making money, it, you know, when all, for the month on the weekly calls. But they, they're, in the, they're heading in the right direction. <coughs> Outstanding shares <coughs> is at 13.7 million. Go to the active tab heading into next week. Again, all contracts, 15,320 contracts, all of them, 257.50 strike, 6.25% out of the money and expires March 22nd. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really, I don't know. I'm, I'm not comfortable with this one. Um, but again, crypto has been on such a bull run, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it settled down a little or, or some people took profits and there was a sell off. <clears throat> so coin price is 242.36. <clears throat> Their 30-day IV is 88.21%. Their next earnings is in May, so that's a ways away. Coney price 26.01. <clears throat> Potential capital gains for next week, dollar 62, not much. But uh yeah, just kind of like, all right, you're getting greedy, you know, like rolling your eye, rolling the eyes because this is a this is a tight strike. With an eighty-eight percent IV, you could go out double digits out of the money, in my opinion, <clears throat> and then still make a decent profit, right? 
what they make 450 what do they usually make if you look 436 220 <clears throat> so you know they went for it and we'll see what happens all right let's look at uh synthetics versus short call income <clears throat> synthetic income for march is 86 million short call loss 11 million that's a that's a net income of 74.9 million so with 13 a million seven hundred fifty thousand outstanding shares there that's a total income per share of five dollars and forty five cents <clears throat> so again the month is early but coney always you know always performing well uh net asset value i'm not going to look at the details of the holdings because again it's way too early in the in the week you know we have a full week to go so but the net asset value they're sitting at 357 million the nav is at 2602 Trade price is twenty six oh one, so you got a penny discount right now. Um, no need to look at uh, obviously uh, after hours or we'll <clears throat> we'll take a look at that Monday morning on the recap. All right, so let's go to Tesla. Okay, so Tesla had three transactions, a BC, a BC, and an SS. So BC buy to close, they close the call. Um, you know, <clears throat> one of the calls at 183.33, and then they closed another call at, you know, the 187.50. Paid a penny on both. So obviously, success on those. They won those, they won those calls. And then they sold a new call for next week. One strike, though, $170. Um, and that's a $1.81 execution price. But let's take a look at the spreadsheets. Okay. So, <clears throat> Tesla has two synthetics. They have the um the 175 which right now again they're they're well below. So, if they had to close it today, which they're not going to, it would cost them 11.2 million. Again, this expires uh May 17th, which the hope is will will be well beyond the 175 by then, but time will tell. <clears throat> the 170 Again, no additions here. Um but um uh, Again, they're, they're also below the 170, so right now this one would cost them 14.1 million to close. But again, too early to talk about uh, these synthetic positions. All right, so let's take a look at this. First, how did Tesla do yesterday? Well, Tesla actually ended up in the green, hallelujah. Uh, Tesla ended up up 0.66%. Tesla went up 0.54%. All right, so they also closed some positions, right? So they closed the 187.50 and they closed the 183.33, okay? Um, <clears throat> net profit, 1.9 million and, and 4.5 million. So they did really good on their covered calls. <clears throat> the two new positions, um, we talked about the other one uh, yesterday. <clears throat> they had the 172.50. <clears throat> At the time, they chose it. That was 6.15% of the money. The new one, though, the 170, which is even lower, that's only 3.93% out of the money. But they got $5.4 million for that one, and they got $1.9 million for the other. Uh, cash and treasuries, they're cash positive again. Uh, so they moved money from the treasuries, and they put it into cash, obviously, to correct their balance sheet. <clears throat> but overall, cash and treasuries did go up $5.6 million. But if you look... Uh, they made about 5.4 on the, uh, you know, the latest call. So it doesn't look like there's <clears throat> too much of a sell-off. I know people think like everyone's selling at a Tesla, um, but which is probably true. But I think a lot of people are also buying in at the same time. Um, you know, this fund has had a horrible track record, but, you know, it's mostly it's not their fault. It's it's the underlying you know, this is a this is a very tough underlying to play options on. <clears throat> so it is what it is. All right, let's continue. Outstanding shares forty four point eight million. Total income sixteen point five million from the weekly calls. Total distribution thirty seven cents. Daily income four cents a day. They're making and daily yield point two eight percent. So that's still pretty good numbers. All right, going into next week, we have the majority of the contracts, 30,325 contracts with a 170 strike. That's 3.93% out of the money. A little tight if we get our recovery, but I don't see a sign of recovery uh, yet, but who knows? What the hell do I know? 
11,635 contracts with a 172.50. That's 5.46% of the money. So this, at least we have two strikes. They're pretty close in price, but at least there's two. Um, 30 day IV, 52%. So that went up a little. Tesla price again is at 163.57. Where is the bottom? We don't know. Tesla is priced at 1493. <clears throat> I'm showing potential gains next week of 65 cents, which is not that great. But again, who knows if Tesla's going to go up next week? <clears throat> Tesla fund manager. You know they're 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 happy. They're you know they're feeling all good. They're like yeah. They're like Tesla's going down, but I'm winning my calls. Um, earnings coming up April seventeenth. Which, April 17th, yeah, that's the, uh, oh no, that, that's not, let me go back to the synthetic expiration, oh, that's May 17th, okay, never mind, all right, so yeah, um, so that's coming up for, you know it, we'll see, maybe we'll get, you know, the, the last two earnings were, were bad, bad reaction, uh, bad earnings sell off, so we'll see what happens with this one, uh, Curve actually had to sell. 20 contracts so people must be leaving uh, that fund so again it's probably because of tesla i don't know how the other funds are doing but they had 100 contracts you know the day prior so now they have 80 again same strike though 230 that's 40 40 point six percent out of the money okay um payment information what do we got we got synthetic loss of 171 million which we already know about no need to cry about that anymore short call income 16.5 million so we'll just look at that based on short call income we're looking at 37 cents per share again still early in the month so we'll see how this uh, plays out outstanding holdings um, again i'm not going to cover the detail because we have a full week ahead but the net asset value is 670 million the nav is 1496 and we got a three three cent discount in the trade price, fourteen ninety three. I know some people like to play that game, so I figured I'd mention that. All right, let's go to Misty. Misty, Misty. So, all right, Misty. A lot of calls here. So, um, what they do? BC, BC, BC. So they closed their positions, their weekly calls, and they opened new positions. Now they open them separately at different times, but they chose the same strike, which, you know, you know how I feel about that. So let's just look at the numbers though. All right, so <clears throat> Misty still still got this 950 just hanging out. There's this 950 synthetic just hanging out. You know, any day now they can sell it and make money. But uh, here we are. Um, if they did it today, they would make $13 million, okay? Which, that's a lot of money for this fund. This is the new synthetic they opened, 1700 strike. They're actually making money now on this. If they sold it, they would make 81000 Um, Because MSTR is priced at 1782 currently. So, but let's see how they did yesterday, price-wise. Uh, MSTR... Went up 6.29%, and MSTY went up 3.29%. Yeah. So obviously, um, did not have the full upside yesterday, but that's okay because it's over forty dollars for God's sake. Unbelievable. All right. So all the all that uh all the transactions you saw on the other page, basically in red, what you see, you know, the close prices. Um, they uh all right did so they won they did not win the first one right the 1620 they paid they paid 18907 to close that one so that one was a loss actually that should be red this is the problem on the on the phone yeah so these two should be red okay forget it i'll do it later um, so they lost 1.4 million and 65,000 on those two. And then they, they paid 277 to close the 1900 
Uh, they won that one. That one was a win of 11,000 and 8,000. And then they lost the 1,700 there, which they paid 95.88 to close. And that was a loss of 251, all right? But look at this, look what they did. All right, so three new contracts. Well, three new, I guess, positions all kinds of different number of contracts, 12 contracts, 50 contracts, and 105 contracts, all the same strike price of 1,850. So they got different price points, which is fine, but it's only 3.79% out of the money. Misty is selling a call, all of their calls at 3.79% out of the money. So, but look how much they made. They made 1.6 million, they made 739,000, and they made 100. And eighty-eight thousand, and guess what? If you look at the top part, see that's sixty thousand. That's a credit, which means they're now officially making money on weekly calls. Again, they have to be successful on the on these, but the weekly calls have turned green. So they went. They're going all in. They're saying, guess what? MSTR is not going up next week, and if it does go up, it's going up a little. At least that's what they think based on this position. So only time will tell. That's a risky move, man. MSTR has been on a tear. Cash and treasuries over all 135,000 up. Um, outstanding shares. Doesn't look like much gain at, at all. 775,000. Again, total income is now a credit. We're making money. $60,000. Distribution, eight cents per share. Daily income. Um, too little to speak of, and then daily yield 0.01%. All right, so what are we looking at? We are looking at, for next week, all contracts, 167 of them, 1,850, 3.79% out of the money, five trading days. So how do you feel about that, guys? Let me know in the comments below, because I, I think this is nuts. But <clears throat> look at the IV. <laughs> the IV is like 160%, basically. And they went that close to the money. They must know something. But we'll see. Again, MSTR price, $1,782. Uh, MSTY price, $40.85. And possible capital gains, only $1.55 for next week. <clears throat> and yeah, that, that's me, though. This is not the fund manager. This is me. I'm like, what? Staring. Like, what? Like, what? All right. Let's take a look here. Again, synthetic debit, $2.9 million, But... They're just waiting. They're going to roll at some point, <clears throat> and that's going to be a massive credit. <clears throat> Short call income is actually a credit. So. But again, net, net income is a loss, so we won't cover that. But short call income, looking at $0.08 cents a share. Again, it's, it's irrelevant until we talk about the synthetic when they roll it. Um, net asset value, $31 million. The NAV is forty fifty one, And the trade price is, is more expensive. It's $40.85. <clears throat> but uh but yeah so that's it that's the summary of all of these trades in going into next week again tesla continues to be on a downward trend um you know and tesla <clears throat> shareholders are not happy rightfully so you know the conversations are already uh, beginning when's the next reverse split but you know blah 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 but if you you know if you're not comfortable owning obviously Tesla, then just get rid of it, right? It's just easier to, you know, your sleep is more important than, you know, your, uh, I guess your pride of, of losing a little money <clears throat> on the sell. I know people always think that, but so if you just, if you want to sell something, that goes for anything, by the way. I noticed, you know, from at least my experience, if I'm just feel, not feeling good about it and I'm just waiting and waiting, I'll just, just sell it, you know? What's my feeling on Tesla? Um, I still own, well now, it was 1,000, now I own 500 shares because of the reverse split. Um, but, you know, I could I could sell it any day at this point and not give a damn. Um, because my opinion on, on that is it's just not like the best fund uh, for this strategy unless you continue to average down with it all the way, right? And I'm not doing that, so obviously, you know, it's hurting me. And I don't want to do that. You know, I, uh, obviously, I want to do that on the others, because they don't always, you know, they're not having the same struggle. Um, 
<clears throat> so, you know, my feelings on Tesla are kind of the same. You know, it's not a, it's not the best fund for this strategy, but at the same time, it could be, you know, it's good income, it's good yield. Um, and Tesla's at the bottom. So it's really, you know, at the same time, you don't want to sell when, you know, stock prices are at the bottom. But to each their own. Sometimes selling is, you know, taking that loss, like pulling that bandaid off, it feels great. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys are doing with your TSLY. Are you uh, buying, holding? Are you averaging down? Or are you just selling and moving on with your life? Um, as far as Coney and Misty, you know, crypto bull run, <clears throat> we got that, what, having coming up in April or something. Are you guys holding it through that or are you selling it before that? Um, let me know in the comments below because I, I don't own Misty. <clears throat> Again, you guys know that because I'm a dumbass. I didn't buy it in the beginning, but is what it is. I do own Coney, not that much, but should I sell it, or, you know, and just, you know, before that having or keep it through the having and after? Um, you know, again, Coinbase is still a good company, right? They're going to be around, but, you know, it's just something like, do you need, do you really need all that high risk in your uh, portfolio? Would you rather take the IV from a company like, you know, obviously it's less IV, like Amazon, just make what you can. <clears throat> or there's so many new funds coming out that are really good. So, so many choices. I do love it though. Anyway, guys, um, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Um, and the key word today is get that damn basketball hoop put together. Um, for those of you not in my Discord, I posted a picture and putting my son's basketball hoop together finally that he got for Christmas. And uh, it's been, you know, it's hard to do it with a one-year-old taking all the crap and running around with it too. But anyway, hopefully I get that done today. So that's the key word, you know, put the damn thing together, whatever you want to say. As always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. Hopefully you feel good about your investments. If not, make some changes, all right? Do what you got to do. It's your portfolio. Who gives a damn what other people say? You know, everyone's got their own journey. Everyone's got their own threshold. Everyone's got their own risk tolerance. You know, everyone's got their own timeline. Do what you got to do and share it, you know, share it with the community. All right, I'm out of here later.